Like I said, I, I graciously get to pilot the ship today, and we're continuing in our Winsome Witness series. And today we're looking at speaking the good news. So in the words of the immortal Captain Jean-Luc Picard, engage. So I love this word winsome. I love this word winsome. The dictionary says it's an adjective meaning attractive or appealing in appearance or character. I, I would like to say and propose that maybe we say and. That it means attractive and appealing in appearance and character. I like that better. That, that just feels right. So it comes from the old English. Winsome. Win equals joy and some. Some. So our witness should be appealing and filled with joy and have strong character. So this morning I have questions and I'm, I'm really hoping that all of you got answers. I hope you all got answers because I'm very perplexed about a few things. Let me start with this one. How many of you in this room woke up this morning, and all of you watching online maybe, woke up this morning and decided, today is the day. Today is the day I'm going to wake up and follow Jesus. Today is the day I'm going, to, I'm going to find a church. Is there anyone here this morning that said that when you got up this morning and, and found us here by some stroke of luck? Anybody here? What? No one just miraculously and magically and inexplicably decided I'm just one day going to follow Jesus? Huh. Is there one person over there? I don't know. I give you... oh, There's one. Hallelujah. That's... Now that's truly the work of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to tell you, it don't often happen that way. Most of us came a different way, right? So let me ask you, how did you come to Jesus? How did you come to faith? Think about that. How did you come to faith? Studies hold that the majority of Christians, majority of us, got it through our parents, grandparents, family. So it was kind of an inherited faith. We kind of inherited faith. And the, the study shows that, that that's usually around the age of 4 through 12. It's gotten younger as the years have progressed. It used to be a little older now. It's, now it's about 4 to 12. Most people will get an inherited faith. And as you get a little bit older in those teen years, those numbers go down. And what comes as a surprise is the Barna Research Group says this group can just as easily leave the faith through other factors as life comes at them, as difficult circumstances arrive. And it's interesting that those who find faith later through circumstances of their life tend to hold faith as their anchor more tightly. It's fascinating. Seems paradoxical that growing up in faith should make a strong plant. But it doesn't seem to do so in every case. Very, very interesting to me. Commitment becomes a stronger component of someone's faith that finds it through circumstances, through finding themselves at the low of lows. And then latching on to something because they had nothing else. Then that faith becomes the rock of their life. Found that interesting. Let's put a statement up on the screen. Let's put this up here. How many of you believe this statement to be true? Every Christian has a responsibility to share their faith. Raise your hands. Come on. I want to see them. Oh, my God, it's not even the full room. Okay, well, that, that jives with the Barna Group. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go to some, some details here. In 1993, 89% of Christians responded that that statement was true. 2018, 64% of Christians responded that, this, that that statement was true. In 2023, 15 
52% of Christians responded that that statement was true. Now, I'm not the greatest of math people, as Chris Larson will tell you, but looks like my math analytics, that stuff's pointing in the wrong direction. That's not going the right way. So in a period of about 30 years, that statement has dropped 37%. So the Barna Group finds that the growing number of Christians believe that sharing the good news is not a personal responsibility, but rather the responsibility of the church. So now I find myself with another question. Who's the church? Who's the church? Um, did you guys fall asleep on me? I see eyeballs. Come on. Who's the church? We are. All right. So if it's the responsibility of the church, but the Christians ain't taking the responsibility for it, then what's the church that these people think are responsible for sharing the good news? The building? I mean, the building can only go by one axiom, and that's if the walls could talk, right? This, this building is not going to put legs on and walk around the neighborhood and, and expand the kingdom. It's just not going to do it. Physically impossible for this building to do that, right? And if you, as the, the responsible Christians, are saying the responsibility is upon Pastor Beth and the elders and the leaders of this church, well, that can work, but our reach is going to be minimal. No, the church is wall to wall, you and me. It's the wall to wall of the church That's, that should be responsible for this. And if you would have got that question wrong, this, this message was going to go in an entirely different direction. So I'm glad that at least we were predominantly, mostly on the same track. So, so the church is not the building. It's not its leadership. It's all of us. And interestingly, as we look in our culture today, the church as an institution has lost a lot of the trust of our current society that's kind of sad but there's good news there's good news you have not lost that trust you have not lost the trust in culture so what i want to do here this morning is to make sure that as we go through this winsome witness series you guys understand and are clear that we have been called and we've been tasked with sharing the gospel, sharing our story, and sharing the witness of Jesus and the life-changing power of our Lord in our life. I want all of you to believe that you have been trained and empowered and challenged to do this and to do it well. Do it well. Jesus put it this way to his disciples. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go... Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And again in Acts 1.8, he puts it this way, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So as we see from these verses, all of us also being disciples of Jesus, we too have this commission, and it's a great one. It's a great commission. We see that Jesus, according to the verses in Matthew, says he will be with us. He will be with us. And in Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit is also empowering us and, and is going to go with us everywhere we go. We have Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We've been empowered. And before this even happens, it begins with three powerful words. I think these are the most powerful words Jesus ever spoke. 
It starts with a come, follow me. I feel like those are the most powerful words you can hear in your life. It's to feel the, the spirit of Christ saying to you, come, follow me. In the following, we glean, we learn, we practice, just like we see the disciples doing as we read the scriptures. What I want to make clear today is that it does not take a biblical scholar or a great order to do this. It doesn't take someone with big understanding and lots of education or I wouldn't be up here. Right? Jesus calls all of us from every walk of life, just like all the disciples. And he said, I will teach you to be fishers of men. Right? So we look at the life of Jesus. He took 12 men from all walks of life, education levels, and just called them to follow. Watch the master. Learn from him. Be his witnesses of what they saw and learned. And we have access to the same things through the Bible, through the scriptures. We know what Jesus did. We know what the disciples saw and experienced. We have that in the word. So be in the word. And at the very least, know its core. Know its flavor. Be able to, to paraphrase. You know, you don't have to sit there and go, okay, that's 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 3. Ah, you don't have to do that. But learn that flavor and be able to, to paraphrase the things that you glean in its pages and see how you can insert yourself into the process. And ask yourself, how do I share my story, my walk with Jesus? How do I do that? Pastor Beth mentioned that there's an intentionality to this process. We need to be open to the idea of sharing ourselves to others. We have to be open to that. Intentionality comes from comfort. Get comfortable sharing your story, your transformation. Take opportunities to think through it, practice it. Write it down. Share it with loved ones to kind of give you that, that comfort and that practice. Home group leaders, make room in your groups, a safe space where people can share and kind of hash that, that out with others. And we can get to hear everyone else's stories. And the more comfortable you get, the more likely it'll come out naturally. And you'll be prepared to look for those opportunities. One of the things I, I really love to do um, it's been fairly recent that I started doing this, but learn to ascribe to the Lord. This is something we don't do, but the Jews culturally were good at this. Ascribe to the Lord. In Psalm 29, 1 and 2, it says, Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Yes, ascribe to the Lord. So a scribe means to attribute to, attribute to. So to help you expand your, your ability to witness, look at the world around you with a keener eye towards God. Right? Huh, the alarm went off and your eyes opened. Could that have been God's grace in your life? Something good happens. Might it not have been the move of God blessing you? You look at your family and you say, has not God been good? You have, a, you have a job and it's good provision. Would that be his grace? The more God is in our life, the more he's in our story... And like, like a tree, we have more branches that, that grow out. And those branches are more opportunities to share God in our life. And so being prepared looks like that. Having branches to pull from when the opportunities come. 
He carried you through a period of grief. Who needs to hear about that story in your life? Groceries left on your doorstep? How'd that happen? You were healed from a physical ailment. How is that possible? God is constantly at work in our lives. And these are the tools that he's putting in our spiritual tool belt to be able to pull from in the right time, in the right moment. We are building a catalog of stories to tell to everyone who comes around us. And those become the witness accounts of God in our life. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Revere means to feel deep respect and admiration. Kind of lines up with a scribe. Revere Christ as Lord. Put him in a, in a high, high place. And we're implored to always be prepared, to be ready, be comfortable. So let me ask you another question. Do you have hope here this morning? Do you have hope? Thank you, Paul. Woo! One guy's awake. Woo! Yes, we have hope. We have a glorious hope. So how would you share that? How would you share that hope? Think on this often. What is the scope of what Jesus has done for you and I, and how has it changed your life? Think about, think about it. Just mull it over. Constantly keep it in your head. You know, as seasons go and change, and that story evolves. More gets added. God's always moving. God's always working. We have to, we have to know what God has done in our life in order to be able to share it, Right? So we have hope because through Jesus we have been saved, redeemed by the blood. His blood shed on a cross have a promise that he will be with us along with the Holy Spirit all of the days of our lives until we all one day see him face to face to live in eternity with our God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because he was resurrected from death. And so shall we. This is great news. This is good news. This is life-changing news. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you thought of us from the beginning of eternity. I had a work colleague years ago. He was not a believer. We were, we were pretty good work friends. And uh, we would eat lunch together sometimes. And I, I'd taken my lunch out a little earlier. It was a beautiful day. There was a lake adjacent to our, our company property. And... I unpacked my lunch there on the picnic table, had a prime view of ducks swimming on the pond. Um, I was a softball player, so ducks on the pond meant a little bit different for me. But, man, you know, I would look at that and go, man, there's runners on the bases. And who's going to come up in the bottom of the ninth inning to bring those ducks home? But whatever. Okay. It was a beautiful scene. Oh, she's going to put that on my, on my notes. Uh, what the world are you doing? Squirrel. So, um, but I mean, it was just a, a beautiful day, and I was going to enjoy it. And so my, my friend comes out. He starts unpacking his, his lunch, and he says, George, I, I just want to ask you. I know what's going on in your life. I know our work atmosphere is not that great, yet you seem to be taking it all in so differently. And I know you're having a hard time right now, but you're just dealing with it so well he's like i've got less than what you have on your plate and i'm a wreck inside what's going on huh so think about that scenario and think about where you would go with that where would you go where would you take this moment and go with this is first peter three fifteen. come to life if I wasn't prepared, yeah, how about them ducks? <laughs> but Peter says, be prepared. He says, be gentle. Have respect for the other person. Hear their heart in the question that they ask. Jesus is with you, 
and the Holy Spirit has empowered you. It's been shown through, again, the Barna Group. I read a lot of their stuff. Um, the Barna Group's research has shown that people that come to faith in Jesus in their older years do, do so through having a relationship with a Christian who is able to be real with them and consistent through time. They have trust in that relationship, so they have trust in your words and your experiences. So when you say, Jesus did it, they hear that. When they say, you know, it felt like it was supernatural, they don't freak out. They trust that. Let's put up these slides. Next slide, next slide. Uh, now, all right, we've all seen these guys. Conversely, the megaphone street preaching about being sinners and needing salvation from fire and brimstone and do you know where you're going? And slick tracks, no matter how great the message, you know what? They have little to no impact. How about the other one? All right, how's that make you feel? Warning, the penalty for rejecting God's plan for Jesus to die and rise from the dead to save you sinners is death, dying eternally in the lake of fire. How do you feel, church? How do you feel? Is that loving? Is that respectful? Does that portray the heart of Jesus? I hope, I, I hope you say no. Because this doesn't feel good to me. Even as someone who is saved, I see this and I cringe. Is this the message we really want to give to people who don't know Jesus? It doesn't feel like gentleness and respect. Pastor Beth last Sunday spoke about the love we must display to each other and to the world Matthew 22, 36 through 40 says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The great commandment and the great commission go hand in hand. To succeed on the commission, you must excel on the commandment because this is where it all pours out from. I wrote that. <laughs> no, but it, I thought it was self-serving to put the George Ling under there, but whatever. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But, but, I mean, it's so true. The great commandment and the great commission have to be together. They have to, they're joined together because as we love then life begins to happen and the exposure for that other person to the love of Christ becomes greater and then the opportunity to question and to discuss and to be real and open with someone becomes more available they will actually come to you so this being able to share your witness isn't so much about going out into the street and banging people over the head with your Bible and saying, do you believe in Jesus? Let me tell you about the Lord. Let me tell you about Jesus. I mean, that's a great component if you're able to really interact with people in a powerful way that way. I mean, the Lord can bless that if that's what he's called you to, but it's so much better when we have interacted with the folks around us. Let them see our life and see what's different and then have them come with questions like my friend at work who ate every word up and was the first person I ever brought to the Lord and I didn't do anything special other than live my life live Jesus out of it and just be consistent and faithful to my friend when he asked how life was going I didn't say hey, it's fine no, I, said, I would say it's been rough. It's been tough. Being real is very important. A recent study showed that 70% of all non believers across multiple age groups were open 
to spiritual conversations. This is pretty good news for all of us that have a story to tell. That means seven out of ten people that you want to run across in your life are pretty open to hearing about what's going on in your spiritual life. They're pretty open to it. So that's good. That's good news for us. Romans 10, 14 through 15, it says, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. See, love calls us to go. Love opens the door. Love builds that trust. And love expands the kingdom. A message of eternal hope given from a personal perspective through the framework of a trusted and committed relationship is most certainly a beautiful thing. Absolutely beautiful. So if the worship team can come back up. Go through some final tips on how to do this. Press and lean into Jesus. Press into Jesus. Live your life as Jesus is directing and leading you. Know his words. Be a witness to who he is. Not who he was, but who he is. He is alive. We serve a risen Lord. So press into Jesus. Be relational and loving. Be yourselves. Give people access to you. The real you. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. When I was doing missions in Nicaragua, I was kind of relearning my Spanish, and, and it was really interesting because I had to speak with a very simple vocabulary. But it was interesting because I was teaching and speaking to uneducated people from the slums. And so my simple language was simply perfect, and God knew that. And that, that blessed me because I always thought I had to be bigger and, and better. And, you know, when I saw the examples of those before me, I, I thought I could never be like that. But he calls us to just be who we are with the tools that he's given us. And, just, and he just says, be ready with those. Pull them out in the appropriate moment and just be simple. Be ready, be simple, be loving, be transparent and vulnerable. That speaks volumes to people. When you share intimately about the struggles, about the life that you're living and, and the good, bad, and indifferent, people take notice. That's how, how they begin to build trust and that's also how they begin to see What's different? What's going on? How's, how are they maneuvering these situations differently? And that brings questions. And finally, have no fear. Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit has empowered you. So as it becomes real to your heart, it can be easily given to someone else.